my story this time is uh, called, it's called uh, Tying Too Hard. Okay. So. Okay. So, anyone in this room in 4-H or ever been in 4-H? Put your hands up. Be proud. So, do you guys remember working on 4-H projects? Basically, your parents telling you, you get this done and make me look good. <laughs> Has any, anyone here ever done anything by the seat of their pants? <laughs> well, I was in 4-H as a young child. And uh, I earned a name, or at least a reputation in my club, as flying by the seat of my boxers. Some said it was because I flew by the seat of my pants but forgot them at home. Other people said I flew by the seat of my pants but left them at home for dramatic effect. <laughs> so we get to the state fair. And uh, as a 4 h -er, you sign up for a bunch of projects and you get maybe six of them done out of 50 that you sign up for. So I did this. Got my six in. And a friend of mine, majorly competing with this friend of mine shows up as well and he has seven projects done I can't let this stand <laughs> so I'm standing in line for uh, my shop project which I kind of threw together because that's how it works and I look over at him and I'm like how many projects you got done and he goes seven I got I got eight <laughs> and he goes your mom said you had six. <laughs> and I say, she was wrong. <laughs> so I'm standing here in line for my shop project. And I've just made a bluff. And I'm not going to fail on this bluff. So I'm scouring my pockets, trying to find something to make a 4-H project out of. And I find a piece of cord. And I look over at my friend and I say, this is my 4-H project. And he goes, what are you talking about? It's just a piece of cord. And as I'm standing in line for this shop project, I start tying this cord. By the, by the time I'm done, like it was a long piece of cord. I was a weird child. But uh, by the time I'm done, I've got a necklace. Pretty good necklace too. So I go over to the crafts and kits line. That's where you put necklaces, apparently. and. Uh, I'm standing in line there, and I go, wait, that only puts me at seven. And I'm, I'm drawing a blank at this time, because I've already used all my ingenuity on this necklace. <laughs> and uh, so I get to the counter, and I look the judge in the eye, and I decide, I'm going to bluff again. And I go, I have a project prepared, but uh, I'm going to need a piece of paper. So judge goes, OK. Um, I got this notebook here. Will this work? And I go, yes. I'm, I'm bluffing hardcore now. So take this notebook, pull out a page, fold it, in, fold it into a triangle, tear the edges. I'm going origami now. So I carefully explained to this judge how this is how you fold this point to this point. And now that this point is here, you crisp the fold. And seducing this judge. <laughs> Not really, I was, I was 15. But <laughs> so folding this crane. And I get to the end, and I'm like, most, the best part about this crane, it flaps its wings. And the judge looks at me. He goes, I'm going to give you a red ribbon. And I go, red ribbon? Sounds like I'm bluffing as, I should get a blue. It was more of, I should get a white. <laughs> and he goes, I'm going to give you a red ribbon. Do you know why? And I go, why is that? He said, you presented an amazing project for presentation. This is crafts and fine arts. <laughs> so I got a red ribbon. <laughs> and then I brought out my necklace. Proudest smile on my face. necklace.
and I hand it to the judge. And he looks at it, and later events in the stories, I'm pretty sure he was majorly impressed with this necklace because of the crane. Like, you know, eat something terrible, and then you eat something okay, and that okay thing tastes amazing. <laughs> so I present it to him. I get a blue. Blue ribbon. It's a good thing. And I go home. Now, I wasn't really avid on keeping track of what I had won at the state fair, or at the uh, county fair. And my friend calls me up, because he's really avid into this. And my friend is, is and was an extremely Christian boy. Immaculate, not a single curse word coming out of this person's mouth. I go, hey Chris, what's up? You asshole! Now something's got him mad. <laughs> and I go, I repeat myself, hey Chris, what's up? And he goes, you know that necklace? This is, this is the friend who was competing me with, with me, right? You're going to the state fair with it. <laughs> so I decided to bluff again. I knew it the whole time. <laughs> And that's why they say that I fly by the seat of my boxers. <laughs> <laughs>